Facebook. Hello everyone, I'm Andy Harrington, Executive Director of the Canadian Food Grains Bank. Hey, and I'm Steve Matthews, Executive Director for the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, otherwise known as ADRA Canada. And this is Get to Know Your Canadian Food Grains Bank member. Steve, it's a really great privilege to have you on today. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the work of, of ADRA Canada? Yeah, absolutely. So ADRA is the a humanitarian and development agency of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Um, so we work in, we're part of a worldwide network. Uh, ADRA works in about 130 countries around the world. And um, through our office here in Canada, we support projects in about, about 20 to 25 different countries around the world at any given time. And it's a mix of about half of our work is on the relief side. Uh, food distribution, cash, that sort of thing. And then the other half is on the, the development side. Um, that's a bit about who we are. We're, are we are headquartered uh, just outside of Oshawa, Ontario, in a little community called Newcastle, Ontario. And I know you have many partners around the world, other ADRA offices. Could you tell us about a memorable visit you've had when you've you visited some of your work, perhaps some of your partners there? Yeah, uh, there's... Lots to, to share, but I'm going to try to pick one that really sticks out to me. Um, and it was uh, it's actually a, one of our CFGB projects, and it's uh, it's in Kenya. Um, so, Andy, I know recently you had a chance to visit one of our projects in Turkana. Um, I did. Be before that project was in Turkana, it was uh, the previous version was in Mandera. And um, the Mandera region is up in the northeast of, of Kenya. And it's a project where we have uh, we've been there for have been there for seven years, and while we've been there, <clears throat> we've actually worked in it's a it's a pretty much an entirely Muslim community. <laughs> when we first came into the community, they, so when I went and visited, first off, I went to go to visit to, to document the drought that had occurred, and of course, we book our flights, you know, a few months in advance. When we got there, it had rained for eleven days straight. And um, there was now a river between the, the town and the airstrip. So they actually, they had, they had tied together barrels and put us on barrels and pulled us across the river. And this was like a full out raging river. So that was, that was quite an experience to get there. You're going to document a drought and there's a, a river where there isn't a river, typically. There was no bridge or anything because there's never a river there. So anyway, we, we go and we visit. And uh, the whole community is out to greet us as we come across. We get to, to go and visit our project. And this project is one where we're really trying to build sustainability in the community and build some food security. So it's a food security type project. Um, and as we go out to, uh, to visit the project, some of the things that we've, we've done are to, to fence in areas, the teaching them how to basically be, make fodder or uh, typically we call it hay here in, in Canada, helping to, uh, to provide that food for the livestock, but also building uh, large catchment uh, ponds for water so they have irrigation after the, the short periods of rain do come. Um, but what really stuck out to me for that visit, one, one comment that was made by some of the community leaders is, you know, here was a Christian organization coming in. It's like, we don't want these Christians coming in trying to convert us. So they were going to reject us coming into the community. And they said, well, let's uh, let's give them a try. And, you know, if we don't like them after six months, we'll just kick them out. And uh, they, they said that was seven years ago. <clears throat> so they, they really came to love ADRA. ADRA became a part of the community. Um, we help people to open up uh, small businesses and shops. We help farmers to have uh, to be able to grow crops um, much much more of the the year than what they normally would these people are pastoralists as well so they would take their livestock to find um, food for their livestock where we're oftentimes traveling and having to cross the borders into into Ethiopia and that sort of thing so they'd be away from home we were told they'd be away from home about 10 months out of the year because of our project uh, now they're away from home maybe one to two months out of the year and some years they're actually able to not have to travel at all so you could just really see the transformational differences we were able to make in the lives of, of that community. 
so it was uh, it was it was a great experience while I was there. Um, one of the one of the family or one of the community members wanted to know how many wives I had. I told her uh, I told her one, and she she said only one. That's uh, <laughs> that's quite interesting. So um, you know, it was just a really really fun experience to be able to meet these people and just see how thankful they were. You know, they they treated us with gifts as we left, and um, you know they. They told us you know, they they love working with Adrian. They're so glad that we're we're in their community. Another piece that came out of this project was an, an indirect benefit of our project is because we had started up a a bit of a, an economy there because through this the economy was building. Um, I believe about a month after I was leaving, they were going to be opening the first bank that they had yeah. ever had in their community because there was enough um, cash and income generated in the community now to to sustain a bank. So. So many different uh, good pieces of that project. Yeah, yeah and you know, I, I, as you say, I've just returned actually from visiting another one of your projects, not a million miles away from there in Kenya, in, in Takana, and was so impressed with the address, address Kenya's ability to just serve no matter who they serve with. So that makes total sense to me. Now, I, I see the banner behind you there. Is there, a, is there a verse you hold on to when you think of the difficulties of dealing with hunger? Because that's a wonderful story you've told us, but you and I both know there are, there are great challenges in our world at the moment. And we, when we think of the hunger crisis, is there a verse that you think of that comes oh, to mind? Absolutely. There's, there's so many verses in the Bible that talk about hunger and how we deal with the poor. Um, but one that really sticks out to me, it's, uh, it's actually Matthew chapter 25 and mm -hmm. starting at verse 35, where it says, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I need a clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? Uh, when did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needed needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did. Mm -hmm. For me, and sending them verse forty. So that's one that really just sticks out to me, and I really think that's an example of how we we should be conducting ourselves as Christians. That is a brilliant a brilliant example of verse that's very meaningful to many of us who work in this field, and I think beyond that, it, just in life in general, mm -hmm. that how we're to treat people and and the way in which we evidence Jesus in that's so important. Thank thanks for that, Steve. T tell us tell us. Um, Tell us about something you're excited about now in the, in the work of Address, something that's really motivating you. Yeah, there's, uh, you know, one thing I've noticed over the past couple of years is, you know, it, it's, you know, you get excited about the work that you do, but it's also sad at the same time, because to be honest with you, I wish that there was no need for an organization like Adra or for CFGB for that matter. Yeah. Uh, what, what a world it would be if, if we were able to eradicate hunger and no longer need our organizations. But, um, you know, I am really excited about some of the projects that we we get to to go forward. I just came back from Kenya uh, last night. And um, what I was there for was, you know, to, to meet with some of our, our country offices uh, and, and members in that area, but also to uh, start off the, it was at a launch meeting, with the the High Commissioner for East Africa for Canada's uh, High Commission to uh, launch our Together project, and the Together project is a thirty two million dollar project that we're going to be executing over the next four years, um, and it's focused on it. It's a health and health and rights uh, type project. Um, there's a significant nutrition component built into the project as well, but really helping. Um, focusing on women and especially adolescent uh, girls to improve their lives. Uh, the areas we're working in are areas where, you know, the region in, uh, in Kenya that we're working in has a 30%, 30% um, of the girls are married by the time they hit 18 years of age. Mm. And uh, this project is, is focusing on trying to, to change that, that trend and trying to change how women are looked at in their communities. Um, one of the things I love about the work we do is that we do try to make a change for 
for the most vulnerable. I think if I were to look at something that's very exciting, this project that I'm talking about here, the Together Project, it focuses on, on the most vulnerable. And that's how we focus our work in general is to work with the most vulnerable in any of the communities. And typically the most vulnerable in the, these communities end up being young women. And uh, you know, in, in this area, girls as young as 10 are, are married off. And uh, to, so to be able to have a project where we can go in and try to reverse that, try to put a stop to those sorts of, uh, of marriages happening is, is actually really exciting to me to, to know that we're able to go in and, and try to make those long lasting impacts. You know, Steve, that's, um, that's something we're, we're very passionate about, as you know, at Food Grains Bank and the work you're doing there is so important to us in, in terms of our work with women and female empowerment and particularly with young girls. It's, it's such a crucial part of what we do. That kind of leads me to my last question with you, actually. What, what is it that you like about being a member of the Canadian Food Grains Bank? What, why, why is that so important to, to, to all of you at ADRA? Yeah, um, you know, when, when I think of, so we all come together with different theologies and there's no, no doubt about it in, in, the, in the Christian world, there are many different beliefs and churches and groups what I love about the Canadian Food Grains Bank is that we're able to come together as 15 different member organizations and work together with a common goal of ending hunger. And, and so, you know, to, to go forward with, with the goal of a world without hunger and to be able to work with the different members of the Food Grains Bank is just a real delight. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's a great, whether it's from a networking opportunity, just to be able to get to meet um, Christians of other denominations who are out there doing it with the same goals, but also there are many times where you know, we'll have a project as ADRA and we'll have three, four, five members come forward and say, hey, you know, we're, we don't have access to Yemen, but you do. We want to support your project there. And then on the other side, you know, there might be a project like, for example, um, you know, if there's a project in Afghanistan, let's say, and we don't have access there, we're able to support yeah, projects yeah. there. So that's one thing that I really, really enjoy about being part of this, this network. It's a great group of people to work with. Um, and not only that, we're able to, to make a bigger difference. There's so much need in the world that we don't need to try to do it all by ourselves. So being able to work together as a group is something I find is just very valuable about being part of the food industry. You know, we are. It's it's just another word, uh, way of saying that we are so much better together. I love the way you've put that. That we can. Mm -hmm. I, I watch that happen all the time. All the members coming in saying we don't have access there. Let's support you. I watch the way that we're able to come together with our different kind of doctrines and 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 the things that would perhaps if we allowed them to separate us, actually bind us together in this common cause of ending hunger in the belief that God not wants everybody to be fed so steve i'm so glad that you're you're a part of this network i'm so glad that adra is as well and i'm so thankful for you for taking the time today it's been a wonderful time to share with you so thanks very much steve yeah thanks for having me my uh, it's been a pleasure